Hello and welcome to the Certification Exam Rapid Training for MS700, Managing Microsoft Teams. I'm Eunice Lowe. I'm a Technical Program Manager with Teams Engineering. And with me today is Tony. Hi, Tony. Hey, Eunice. How are you doing? Pretty good. How's it going over there? Uh, good, thank you. And hey, hey to everybody listening. Uh, my name is Tony Woodruff. I'm a Technical Program Manager within Teams Engineering alongside Eunice. And we're here to take you through MS700. The learning path from Microsoft 365 Certified Teams Administrator Associate requires the MS700 exam. Passing the exam will earn you the Microsoft 365 Certified Teams Administrator Associate Certification. Check out the links at the bottom of this slide. This will give you more information on the Microsoft Certification, Learning Partners, as well as resources on Microsoft Learn that will help you get ready for this exam. Tony, did you want to talk a little bit about the certification details? Sure, thanks Eunice. With all Microsoft exams comes an official Microsoft curriculum that you can sit at a learning partner. For this exam, we have the Managing Microsoft Teams course, which is MS700 T00A in its current form, which is a four day course that you can sit at any learning provider around the world. This course will cover in more detail the topics that we are discussing here at a high level today and will equip you fully for the MS700 exam. So what do we expect from an exam candidate? The typical profile for somebody that's going to be sitting this exam will be a Teams administrator that is configuring, deploying and managing Office 365 workloads for Teams that focus on building an efficient collaboration and communication environment. With this exam, we, as you're going to be finding as we step through all the topics here today, it covers a broad spectrum of different configuration items and workloads inside Teams. There are going to be elements of the exam that are going to be look, looking at the Teams Admin Center, asking you about theory, asking you about how to put uh, steps in a specific order, and asking you about PowerShell commandlets. But it's not just limited to Teams. Because Teams integrates at a high level, with a multitude of different platforms and is reliant upon platforms such as SharePoint and Exchange, OneDrive and Azure Active Directory, you'll need to understand all of those integration points and how we build upon them to produce the Teams experience for the end users. There will also be elements within this exam which will be looking at how we integrate external apps and services into Teams. And there will also be parts of the exam where we're looking to test you around what you know about Teams telephony and the different voice features and voice topologies that you can deploy within Teams. With a Teams administrator, you may not necessarily just be working on Teams. You could be looking at a multitude of different other workload administrator roles as well, including security and compliance, messaging, networking, identity and devices. And there are all role-based learning paths and exams for you to follow if you do want to look at those after this exam. Let's get started with our exam topics. For MS700 Managing Microsoft Teams, you will need to be able to plan and configure a Microsoft Teams environment, which makes up 45 to 50 percent of the exam content. You will also need to be able to manage chat, calling and meetings, which makes up 30 to 35 percent of your exam content, as well as manage teams and app policies which makes up 20 to 25% of the content. Please note, as of January 27, 2021, the skills being measured are being updated. This content reflects the new syllabus. Let's get started. In section one, we will cover upgrading from Skype for Business to Microsoft Teams, plan and configure network settings for Microsoft Teams, and implement governance and lifecycle management for, government for Microsoft Teams. Let's start with choosing an appropriate upgrade path and coexistence mode to meet specific requirements. When choosing an upgrade path, administrators should be familiar with the different coexistence modes that are available to them. Teams only, islands, Skype for Business with Teams Collab and Meetings, Skype for Business with Teams Collab, and Skype for Business only. You should take special care to understand how chess, calls, and meeting behavior changes for each recipient of a particular upgrade mode. 
When considering meeting migration, you should think about whether managers and delegates are in the same migration batch. When considering meetings as well, here are the following options you should consider. Whether a meeting can be scheduled in Teams, in Skype, or in both, and if existing Skype for Business meetings will be upgraded to Teams meetings. To facilitate that, you can use the Meeting Migration Service, also known as MMS. The Meeting Migration Service is a cloud service that updates the user's existing meetings in the following scenarios. When a user is migrated from on-premises to the cloud, when an admin makes a change to the user's audio conferencing service settings, when an online user is upgraded to Teams only, or when a user's mode in Teams upgrade policy is set to Skype for Business with Teams collab and meetings, or you can manually trigger this using PowerShell. Pay attention to the limitations of the meeting migration service. It cannot be used if the user's mailbox is hosted in Exchange on-premise, and it also cannot be used when the user is being migrated from the cloud to Skype for Business server on-premise. In these situations, you can consider using the meeting migration tool to migrate your meetings. Administrators should be familiar with the PowerShell commands required to trigger meeting migration service for a specific user. A sample of the command is up on the screen. You will need to use Microsoft Teams, PowerShell module, or Skype for Business Online connector to connect to Skype for Business Online. You can start a meeting migration by using the start-cs meeting migration commandlet, seen on line 5. You can check on the status of meeting migrations by using a get-cs meeting migration status, seen on line 7. Here you can see the output of the commands. Start-cs meeting migration starts meeting migration for Adele Vance. Get-cs meeting migration status provides an output that shows how many users are in progress, pending, or succeeded. Next, let's take a look at configuring Microsoft Teams upgrade notifications and meeting app preferences. Teams administrators can configure your coexistence mode and app preferences from the Microsoft Teams Admin Center. Note the controls to notify users that an upgrade to Teams is available, as well as the default meeting app behavior. This control is accessible underneath org wide settings on the Teams upgrade blade. Also on the screen, is the control to configure your coexistence mode for your entire tenant. To configure your coexistence mode on a per-user basis, you will need to take a look at the individual user configuration. To do so, find your individual user and take a look at their team's upgrade settings on their account. Click the Edit button to alter the coexistence mode for a specific user and click Apply to make the change. Administrators should also be familiar with the PowerShell commands required to do this manually or in batch. Lastly, let's take a look at the Teams Advisor. The Teams Advisor is a tool that is available in the Microsoft Teams Admin Center. To get to it, look under the planning blade and select Teams Advisor. You will notice there are plans built by modality. To look at your Skype for Business Upgrade Teams Advisor, you can click on View All to see any warnings that may have been triggered, as well as the View link, which allows you to see a detailed breakdown of all the tasks you must complete when considering a Skype to Teams upgrade. Now that we have taken a look at the content, here are some go-dos. Make sure you review the behavior of different upgrade methods, including the sample case study on your upgrade journey from Skype for Business to Microsoft Teams. Understand how the meeting migration service works and how to trigger meeting migration service for a specific user. Review the Teams upgrade options available in the Teams Admin Center and walk through the Teams Advisor interactive guide in the link. In our next section, we will plan and configure network settings for Microsoft Teams. Let's start with planning for successful network deployment by using Network Planner.
Network Planner is another tool that's available in the Microsoft Teams Admin Center. You will find it under the Planning Blade. To get started, note that there is a Network Plans and a Persona tab. There are some predefined personas, but you can add more to customize the usage to meet your user profiles. Next, let's add a Network Plan. And within the Network Plan, add any sites to be considered. Now that my sites are configured, I can generate a report by going to the Report tab and clicking Start a Report. Here I'll allocate my users by persona type and click Generate Report. This provides me an estimate of the estimated bandwidth usage as well as any warnings um, if I may exceed the allowed bandwidth of a particular site. Please note the buttons in the top right that allow me to change the view of my report and export this to a PDF as well. Let's also look at accessing net network readiness by using a network testing companion. The network testing companion is a PowerShell tool that's available from the PowerShell gallery. To install it, follow the instructions on the PowerShell gallery guide page. Here is the view of the network testing companion. It allows you to test all IPs and ports that are required for Teams media connectivity, checks for an internet connection, and also measures the network quality in terms of packet loss, round trip time, jitter, and packet reorder ratio, which are critical to good Teams media performance. Let's move on to configure network ports and protocols used by the Microsoft Teams client. The Microsoft Teams Admin Center includes controls to configure the ports used by the Teams client underneath the Meeting selection and selecting Meeting Settings. Over here, you will see the option to toggle your quality of service markers and specify the port ranges used by the Teams client. Plus note, this control only affects mobile and Mac clients today. In order to configure quality of service markers for Windows and Linux clients, you must use the GPO for Windows clients or use switch configurations to tag traffic for all clients involved. Now let's take a look at implementing governance and lifecycle management for Microsoft Teams. The Teams Admin Center includes controls to deploy some pre-built Teams templates, as well as to add custom Teams templates as well. You can access this control by selecting the Teams blade and looking for Teams templates. To add a custom template, click Add. Note the settings that are available to you, as well as the options to add channels, tabs, and apps to a Teams template. Next, let's look at setting up policies for Microsoft 365 group creation. I'd like to call out the difference between the Microsoft 365 group and a Microsoft team. All Microsoft teams include a Microsoft 365 group. Not all Microsoft 365 groups may be a Microsoft team. It's important to remember that group-based controls affect all services that rely on groups for access, including Outlook, SharePoint, Yammer, Microsoft Teams, Microsoft Stream, Planner, Power BI, and Project for the Web. You must use Azure Active Directory PowerShell Preview Module to configure the Microsoft 365 group creation control. This sample script is provided by the source material on your GoDo slide. You will need to create a security group and then populate the name of your security group in the sample script. You must also make sure that you are using the Azure AD preview module as noted in the source document. You can import the module by typing import module Azure AD preview. And once it is imported, you can run the sample script that is provided on the source image to configure specific group creators. Other group controls include expiration policy and naming policy. 
Since this is a control in the Microsoft 365 group, you will need to look in the Azure AD portal for this control. Within the Azure AD portal, make sure you are in the group's node. Over on the left, you will see the expiration policy controls. Groups can expire after 30 days or two years of inactivity. You must provide an admin contact for notifications for groups with no owners. You can also choose to enable expiration for all selected or no groups. Also in the Azure Active Directory portal is the configuration for your naming policy. The naming policy allows you to specify a list of block words that may not be used in the naming of a group. You can download the existing list of block words and upload an updated file. Also on the screen is the group naming policy, which allows you to enforce a naming convention, which includes prefixes. You can use a static string or a predefined list of attributes from Azure Active Directory. As an administrator, you will also need to be able to archive, unarchive, and here restore, we are the final and topic delete a team. Section three, manage phone system. To archive, unarchive, and delete a team. Within this part of the exam, they're going to team, expect you to understand you how to manage resource teams accounts, admin center. how to create and configure call Under queues, teams, how to create and configure auto attendance, blade. how to manage call here you policies, will see a list of teams how to manage calling policies, how to manage call ID the policies, to manage, and how to interpret the direct meeting health archive. Dashboard. So I'm going to cover Unarchive two sections in here at a very high level. Or delete the team. Calling policies. Calling policies are there to control the calling functionality that you want However, to be made available. However, deleted teams users. cannot be restored from the team. At a high level, we have a global policy as you'd expect, and we have user policies to, to restore and delete individually team, to users. You will need to visit the groups. All of this is configurable by the Teams Active Admin Center and with PowerShell, Over and you can also left, allocate this to groups group using personas selection. if you wish. This, shows this enables you, a list you to turn on or groups, off some of the advanced as well as features the permanent deletion that we provide dates. as part of calling. Select the Examples group or could be including you, you don't want people to be able to call forward calls off of group. teams. Or you want voicemail to be available or not available, depending Once upon the account that you provide Once again, this brings us to our list of go-dos. So the you're going to be expected to group, understand some of these sure and what the calling policy effectively does. And the so it's worth taking note and perhaps having a play creation. on a test tenant that you might have. Also make sure you're familiar with how to archive, resource accounts, unarchive, delete and restore Resource teams, accounts are fundamental to how we build control exists call keys in the Teams and Admin Center or Azure Active So what is a resource portal. account and what do we use it for? So in section two, to us it's a disabled user object in our Azure Active access, Directory that you can create managing security and you can assign a phone number to deploying and managing not, Microsoft Teams endpoints and, depending upon how you and monitor and analyze service your usage. Your call queues or your auto attendance. Administrators should understand how and to you can manage this in a couple of places. For Microsoft you can manage it like I have in that example in there where I've built a call queue on auto attendance and two resource accounts. You can manage it in the Teams Admin Center. Or you can create this allows you to control whether or not guest access really is allowed in the team service as a whole. Really simple, and you can do and that if it really is quickly. allowed, it's what worth the guest understanding user experience there are some like. dependencies here. You Blocking have guest to access to a specific team in a needs to be completed order, with the Azure AD Preview PowerShell because module, similar to configuring or call queues. They who may be referencing group. resource accounts that Please you might note, have created you must have some kind of sage or command. So understand the, the order, shown on this play page around with call queues and auto attendance, build you some yourself, just to get it group in your mind. To prevent if guest you get members. one of those questions like we all have, where they'll ask you to put the, the steps in order. Understand this in a bit can of also be controlled using a meeting policy. So here's some go-dos. Meeting Go policies and learn how apply to, to the resource organizer accounts, create and configure call queues, but do allow create some auto all attendance, have a play with that, by that organizer and assign numbers to, to have specific behaviors Understand how to manage call card policies and, and manage guests. calling policies and how to manage caller ID policies and what they do. And guest how to interpret direct in Azure Active health Directory dashboard. Portal. So in order to remove the guest user, you must needs look at that to be there user to be populated with data, Azure Active Directory but you may want to go and have a look at some of the data points that you get off of that. Onwards to section four. On the Azure in section Active four, Directory we're going to be covering managing teams user, and as app as well as policies. And any this makes up 20 to 25 percent of the exam overall, the and we've got remove, three sections we're going to cover: and just delete manage user a team, to remove a guest manage user. membership in a team, and how to implement policies for Microsoft Teams You can also use Azure Active Directory Access Review. 
So in the manager team section guests, of your access. exam, they're going to be expecting the you to understand how to create a team, how to upgrade the existing resource to a team, how to manage privacy levels for a team, section. and how to manage org wide Over on teams. The left, look for the access review option. So as part of this, there's some functionality called create and a team search for using the templates. User in question you can to create an access a template review. that your users can deploy. For example, Lastly, if you have let's take a look at just access from the Azure Active Directory portal or an event template. You will need to be These in the are all available within the team client. Go and have a play it, with it if it's available on your, on your tenant. User and it enables us to configure specific take a look items at like a external name, collaboration settings. like some settings that you normally would configure when you create a team. This like displays the options you have to any configure to guest access any tabs, for your any entire apps. tenant in the gives us a great of the starting workflow. point. Changes to create here. blank templates, do you can do this within the wizard by clicking add, Microsoft or you can duplicate an existing template and just and any SharePoint sites or you that can rely use an existing team within the environment as your baseline. So if you want to build it out within Teams, you can then use that to uh, create Once again, template for the template and go from there. It's worth understanding Here's that if you do this for the first time, it can take These a little bit of time to replicate the step -step So be aware of that one as, a, as an IT the pro. The things uh, you saw in the demo. Be sure to take the time to familiarize yourself with You're also going to be expected to know how to manage, manage membership in a team. Access and so how you would manage users in a team, be that Next you're up, controlling it the team's admin center, compliance. whether you're doing that for configuring dynamic membership, which you can do with Azure roles, AD, and I'm going to show you in a moment, and manage compliance or features, managing access reviews for team members. Access reviews are really, really important. Create they security and compliance control. alerts for Microsoft Teams. How many people Creating are in that team that may policy, have been there, say, 30, 60, 90 days, and they don't be there anymore? Teams. Really handy for guests. Microsoft Teams so very quickly at a high level, you can configure dynamic membership. Microsoft dynamic membership is a simple center, way to manage groups by with a constant user. change in membership. So in this example, I've created a group for all Washington State-based employees. But you and can do it for company-wide groups or department-based groups, and you build a rule that enables or you to target Azure specific attributes in AAD. Again, if by you editing have the user a team associated with this Microsoft and taking a look at group, assigned roles. AAD will update the membership and add them into the team to create and manage compliance really, really simple, features, really, really including retention policies and, and sensitivity from labels. The Azure Active Directory admin Security and compliance it's also worth pointing out can be managed for the Microsoft 365 the security Microsoft 365 group center. before you can amend any of these dynamic To create a retention policy, I will select policy. So some go do's. Go and understand how to create a team. And Go and learn about how policy. you manage teams in the Microsoft Admin Center and use templates to do that. Understand how you can upgrade an existing resource to teams. So you might have created a SharePoint to group that doesn't have a team with it. You can go into the Teams client and upgrade teams it to be a uh, add note, teams over the top of it you so you enhance Microsoft 365 groups. For teams, understand how to manage privacy levels messages. for a team and how you would manage you all wide teams. Make sure all wide teams that any are important and they have specific use cases that may not work for larger organizations of 100,000 people that may bust some limits. When configuring and finally, we're going to be talking policy, about implementing policies please note in, for that Microsoft Teams apps. Channels, so here you'll chats, be able to create and manage app permission and policies, create and manage app set of policies, and the exam will expect you to understand what the differences are between messages the messages cannot be included So an app the same permission policy, policy is controlling what workload. apps are available within the app store within Microsoft Teams. Also in the Microsoft we have three different types. We have a Microsoft app, third-party apps, and custom apps. And there are different the levels associated with it. So if you allow all apps, that enables them all. If you allow specific apps but block others, that's your, your allow list. If you have a block list, is you can block on specific ones but allow all others, and then you can also block apps. It's worth understanding the Over different your audit log ways you can page, do that, and how, for example, you might want to uh, new block alert custom code as well. This will allow you to create an activity The go-dos from this are going to understand the differences that will detect between when certain teams permission activities policy are and a setup policy because they're Clicking distinctively different. Think of an app permission policy as being available for what app or Controlling the behavior of what that apps are available an to a and an app setup policy defining what apps you want appearing down the left hand rail These within Microsoft. When a team is created, and with that, I'm created. now going to hand back to or any Eunice. of the other examples Thanks shown on the page. This alert experience is distinct from the updated advanced alert features seen on the left hand side of the compliance center. The advanced alert experience can be used to trigger an alert for changes to SharePoint files that are stored in Teams, or if sensitive data that is labeled with a sensitive 
sensitivity label is altered. Administrators should also be able to define and create an information barrier policy. Please familiarize yourself with the steps and requirements needed to configure an information barrier policy. For the haptic motors in the group, again, here are our go-to slides with handy links to walk through the steps of the things we have looked at. Next, we will look at deploy and manage Microsoft Teams endpoints. In this section, we will look at deploying Microsoft Teams clients to devices, including Windows, VDI, Windows Virtual Desktop, Mac OS, and mobile devices. The Microsoft Teams is included with existing Microsoft 365 apps click to run installs. They can be included in any deployment method that you use for Microsoft's 365 apps today. The same install method can be used for installations on a Mac. Additionally, there is an Office Suite install package that allows installation on a Mac. For VDI's and Visual's virtual desktop installations, use of the Click to Run installer is not supported today. In these scenarios, you will want to look at using a per machine or per user installation using the MSI package. Administrators should be aware of the hardware requirements and the recommended configuration for persistent and non persistent VDI setups. Also, specific to the installation on VDIs, with per machine installation, automatic updates are disabled. Administrators must manually update the app as time goes forward. For iOS and Android devices, Microsoft Intune can be used to deploy the Teams app directly from the Android Store or the iOS Store to your mobile devices. Intune is also used to manage deployment to Microsoft Teams rooms. Microsoft Teams devices, including phones, rooms, Collaboration bars and team displays can be managed from the Microsoft Teams Admin Center. Devices can be assigned a configuration profile by selecting the type of device, selecting configuration profile, and clicking Add to make a configuration profile. This configuration profile can then be assigned to a specific phone to manage the behavior of that device. The, the Devices view in the Teams Admin Center also allows you to assign and manage tags associated with a specific device. Please note, device tags are associated with the resource account that's logged into a device. If you sign a resource account out of one device and use it to sign into another device, the device tags are applied to the new device. Monitor and analyze service usage. In this section, we will learn how to interpret Microsoft Teams usage reports, interpret Microsoft 365 usage reports, optimize call quality by using call analytics, analyze organization-wide call quality by using call quality dashboard, and use Power BI to identify call quality issues. Microsoft Teams reports are available in the Microsoft 365 Admin Center underneath Reports Usage. The Microsoft Teams Admin Center underneath Analytics and Reports. And as an add-on app in Power BI underneath the Microsoft 365 Usage Analytics Report. Administrators should be familiar with which types of reports are located in which location as they are distinct. Next, let's look at optimizing call quality by using call analytics. Call Analytics is a tool that's available in the Teams Admin Center in the User's Blade. Select the user that has had an issue with the call recently and select Call History. If the user has had any calls recently, you will see them listed. You can then select a specific call, 
to take a look at the call quality, as well as any detailed analytics information, including whether or not the audio quality was good or bad. Also available in the Microsoft Teams Admin Center is the Call Quality Dashboard. Call Quality Dashboard, or CQD for short, provides an aggregated organizational level view of call and audio quality, including video streams, for all users in your organization. Call quality dashboard information can be also imported and analyzed in Power BI by utilizing the Power BI CQD connector. For the hands-on learners in the group, here are some links to review and step through some of the items we looked at. Thank you, Eunice, for taking everybody through sections one and two there. Really, really enjoyed the content that you covered. Now it's over to section three and four. Welcome to section three, managing chat, calling and meetings. This part of your exam is weighted at 30 to 35% overall, and we'll be covering four key topic areas. Managing chat and collaboration experiences, managing meeting experiences, managing phone numbers, and managing phone system. So let's get started. Managing chat and collaboration experiences has quite a number of uh, sections within it. For the purpose of this cert session, I'm going to be taking two areas per topic, so we can drill into those in a bit more detail and I can explain a little bit about them. But for this section, you're going to be expected to understand how to configure messaging policies, how to manage external access, how to manage channels for a team, how to manage private channel creation policies, how to manage email integration, how to configure external access to SharePoint Online and OneDrive for Business, and how to manage cloud file storage options for collaboration. So let's start with messaging policies. So messaging policies are available out the box with a default set of recommendations. This default policy is available on your tenant now and will apply to any users that you haven't scoped a specific custom policy to. You can use a messaging policy to control features of messaging inside Teams. Not all organizations are equal. Some personas of users, you may not want to have certain features, but other personas like information workers, you may want to have the full feature set available to you. You can manage these messaging policies in two places. You can create, delete, assign, and amend them in the Teams Admin Center, and you can do exactly the same thing via PowerShell. If you want to do it via PowerShell, you're going to need to connect to the Skype for Business Admin Center, and you're going to need to use the CS Teams messaging policy commandlets in order to do that. Using new to create one, set to amend an existing one, grant to assign it to a user, and remove to delete one. One important thing to be aware of when you remove a policy is you must ensure it's not assigned to everybody, otherwise you're going to get an error. Let's talk about managing sharing files with SharePoint and OneDrive for Business and why this is important. So with my security hat on, you may not want everybody to be able to share all files and folders off of your tenant that may not require a sign-in. You may have sensitive data in there that you want to protect and enforce things like multi-factor authentication or they create a account within your environment so you can audit and log what's going on. Now, Teams inherits external sharing settings from SharePoint and OneDrive admin centers. So whatever you set in either one of those, Teams will pick up and honor accordingly. So when you set these policies, it's important to think about and understand the different types of sharing that, will, that your users will do. So they may be sharing internally with each other. They may be sharing externally, and that's the bit you may want to stop. But whenever you deal with these policies and you think about them and plan them, you must understand the user or business impact of making things more secure or dialing down functionality. So as you can see here on my screenshot, I'm allowing SharePoint links to be shared with anyone and it doesn't require a sign in or is what we would call anonymous, uh, anonymous links. But for somebody's files in their OneDrive, I'm only allowing guests already in my organization's Azure Active Directory. Now, it's important to understand as well that if SharePoint is set at new and existing guests, as an example, but I want OneDrive to be anyone, I'm not going to be able to do that. 
you need to you need to ensure that both are either exa set exactly the same level or one is lower. Now you can further restrict sharing for each individual SharePoint site or OneDrive. And there's a link if you do go into the SharePoint Admin Center on how to do that. Teams will honor whatever is set in here. And it, as part of your planning for Teams, it's important to understand that. So I've covered that at a really high level, but to be successful at this section of the exam, what do I need to know? You need to review the messaging policies and how to manage external access in Teams. And I've given you the links there on where to go in Docs to go and uh, read at your leisure. You need to also review channels in Teams and how to manage private channel creation. There are different types of Teams. There are different privacy levels in Teams. Org-wide Teams, private Teams, public Teams. Go and explore and understand the fundamentals of how that works. Also go and look at Teams policies as well. You may not want everybody to be able to create private channels because when you create a private channel, you spin up a SharePoint site associated with it and it has it's more permissions for you to manage. Also go and explore the configuring external access for SharePoint Online and OneDrive for Business in more detail. Go and look about how email integration works with Teams. And when we're talking about email integration here, we're talking about creating a uh, email address for a channel, which your users will be able to do, to email content in. You may want that on, you may want that off. Where would I go to configure that? And also go and look at cloud, cloud file storage options for collaboration. You can enable third party file storage options like Box, like Dropbox. They can be on by default, and you may need to turn those off if they're not approved sharing platforms within your organization. So let's look at creating meeting and creating and managing meeting experiences. So within this section of the exam, we're going to expect you to know these key areas. Configuring meeting settings, which I'll talk about in a moment. Creating and managing meeting policies. Configuring settings for live events creating and managing policies for live events, and configuring conference bridge settings. So let's look at this meeting settings. If, when you configure meeting settings in Teams, you have this bunch of config available to you. Now you can configure this via the Teams Admin Center, or you can also can configure these via PowerShell. Email invite, uh, e email invite customization, we now also surface a preview to you. Now you may ask, why would I do that? A lot of organizations actually want their company logo on there or specific URLs for legal pages that they may be hosting on uh, the web or a help URL to take them to or point them at a help desk. They may also want to include some text in there. With this part of the admin center, you can preview the invite and you can see what you uh, are effectively setting before you make it effective within your organization. One key section of this config that's really important is the participant section at the very top. You can restrict anonymous participants from joining your team's meetings and interacting with apps in those meetings. Now, you may ask, what's an anonymous participant? Anonymous participant could be somebody that doesn't have a team's account and they can effectively put any name in the, uh, in the page to sign in. They are anonymous because we haven't authenticated them. One other thing that's really important to understand around configuring meeting settings is you can control Teams quality of service settings and lock media to specific port ranges. Now, why would I do that? I would do that because if I have quality of service within my network and my network is looking for specific ports, then I can dive in there really quickly and make, the, make Teams honor these port ranges so my network will prioritize the packets accordingly. So let's talk about meeting policies, another key part of your exam. Meeting policies are there to control the functionality, as you would guess, of users in Teams participating in meetings. You can assign these at a global level, in which case it will affect everybody that doesn't have a user policy assigned. You can assign it at a user level, so you're targeting individual users or personas of, of, of users within your environment, or you can manage them using groups. So you would group the identities together in an Azure AD group and use policy assignment to drive that which is a far easier way of managing user scoped policies. We split meeting policies into four sections, general, audio and video, content sharing, and participants and guests. Within meeting policies, there are some key functionality items that you can turn on or off. Screen sharing, transcription, cloud recording, chat in meetings, NDI streaming, and many more. Keeping consistent, we like to give you some go-do's. Go and learn some more because we can't cover all the content in the time we have. 
Go and learn about how to configure meeting settings and create and manage meeting policies in more detail. Go and learn about live events and how you can create and manage policies for those live events. Understand the different types of live event and the different ways you can feed content into a live event. Also go and learn about conference bridge settings. Understand what a conference bridge is. Understand where you can administer those settings in the Teams Admin Center or in PowerShell. Understand how you can manage audio conferencing settings for your users as well. Some users may want numbers that are defaulted to their location. Also go and understand about how to configure outbound call restrictions. Understand what it actually is. Outbound call restrictions enable you to block somebody from dialing out to a uh, remote PSTN endpoint from a conference bridge. You may want to restrict that so some users can't actually do that. And we'll now move on to managing phone numbers. In the managing phone numbers section of the exam, you're going to be expected to know a lot of specifics around how PSTN works within Microsoft Teams and how you manage the different types of numbers and emergency calling that's available to end users as part of the service. Within this section of the exam, we're going to be covering recommend a PSDN connectivity solution based upon specific business requirements. So that could be phone system, calling plans, or phone system with direct routing. Understanding how to order phone numbers with the Teams Admin Center. Understanding how to manage service numbers and what service numbers do. Understand how to add, change, or remove an emergency address for your organization. Understand how to assign, change, or remove a phone number for a user. Have a broad understanding of managing voice and audio conferencing settings for users and how you would configure dynamic emergency calling. So let's talk about PSTN connectivity with the Microsoft Teams. In Teams, we have two real distinct flavors of, of PSTN connectivity based upon the customer requirements. And it's important to understand the pros and cons for each of these when you recommend a solution and if you uh, get a case study presented to you within the exam. To make calls within Microsoft Teams using PSTN of any type, you require a phone system license. With a phone system license, that lights up the PBX functionality that's built into Teams. But that it doesn't just stop there. You need the phone system license, but then you need either a calling plans license, which is you procuring telephony from Microsoft, or you bring your own telephony with direct routing. So let's talk about calling plans. Calling plans are numbers procured and managed by Microsoft in our launched regions, the regions around the world. Users are licensed with a calling plan, which gives them access to a domestic level of calling or domestic and international calling. And each one has, its, has different costs associated with it and different sets of bundled minutes. What we find with calling plans is that numbers uh, that numbers of minutes are pulled. So if minute bundles are exceeded across the tenant, if everybody is making lots of PSTN calls, then communication credits will be required. Communications credits are the ability for an organization to effectively top up their account with us for us to be able to charge for any numbers that are outside of zone A countries or outside of the bundled minutes that they have with us. The benefits of calling plans are that we require no infrastructure deployment at the customer whatsoever, and there's no maintenance required for any kit that could be deployed with direct routing. So let's talk about direct routing. Direct routing is the ability for a customer to bring their own telephony or bring your own trunk, BYOT. It requires a supported and certified session border controller that will be deployed in the customer's environment and it enables the use of virtually any PSTN carrier that presents a SIP trunk or any other form of connectivity to provide a telephony solution for Teams. You can use this, and customers do use this heavily, for interoperability between an existing telephony environment like analog devices or third-party PBXs to link it into Teams. It can be configured and managed by the customer if they have the skills available to them or a carrier or partner. Direct routing does add a level of complexity, does add some costs around managing and supporting the SBCs. If it's running in uh, Azure, as an example, as a virtual machine, there's, there's obviously costs associated with that. But it does enable the customer to manage the PSTN carrier element themselves and 
build a plan and, and manage numbers and everything with the carrier themselves rather than through Microsoft. Important thing to be aware of is that you can mix the two together. If you don't have coverage for direct routing in specific countries, or and but Microsoft do, you can mix calling plans and direct routing together. So how do I order phone numbers? As part of the exam, and as part of being a Teams admin, you'll need to know how to order phone numbers using the Teams Admin Center. It's important to understand for this exam how you would order those numbers, the different types of numbers available there, be it a user, be it a conference bridge, be it a toll or toll free, be it a call queue, be it an auto attendant, how you define locations when ordering numbers and what that's used for. Here's a hint, emergency calling. And understand how certain types of services require specific types of number. And also be very well versed in how you would assign a number to a user, remove a number to a user, and also understand how to port numbers in. Porting may or may not be mentioned on the exam, but it's a really important area to understand as a Teams admin if you want to bring numbers in from another telco. Understand the go-dos of this part of the exam. Go and understand how you can specify a PSTN connectivity solution based upon customer requirements. Calling plans may be advantageous over direct routing and vice versa. Understand the pros and cons of each of them. Look at things like cost. Look at things like availability. Look at the advanced features that direct routing may be able to offer if there's a requirement to integrate with a third party PBX. Look at how you can order phone numbers for teams. Look at how you can uh, assign those to users or manage service numbers. Look at how you can change or remove a phone number for a user inside the Teams Admin Center. Also understand how to add, change or remove emergency addresses for the organization and how you can configure dynamic emergency calling. Dynamic emergency calling can be a requirement depending upon where you are deploying Teams and dynamic emergency calling is there to provide the location information to the PSAP or the public safety answering point, And that may require some third party hardware or software to be deployed in the form of an ELIN gateway, depending upon the PSTN setup. So it's important to understand that. And here we are in the final topic of section three, manage phone system. Within this part of the exam, they're going to expect you to understand how to manage resource accounts, how to create and configure call queues, how to create and configure auto attendance, how to manage call park policies, how to manage calling policies, how to manage caller ID policies, and how to interpret the direct routing health dashboard. So I'm going to cover two sections in here at a very high level. Calling policies. Calling policies are there to control the calling functionality that you want to be made available to your users. At a high level, we have a global policy as you'd expect, and we have user policies that you can scope individually to users. All of this is configurable via the Teams Admin Center and with PowerShell, and you can also allocate this to groups using personas if you wish. This enables you to turn on or off some of the advanced features that we provide as part of calling. Examples could be including, you don't want people to be able to call forward calls off of, of Teams or you want voicemail to be available or not available, depending upon the account that you provide the calling to. So you're gonna be expected to understand some of these and what the calling policy effectively does. So it's worth taking note and perhaps having a play on a test tenant that you might have. Resource accounts. Resource accounts are fundamental to how we build call queues and auto attendance. So what is a resource account and what do we use it for? So it's to us, it's a disabled user object in Azure Active Directory that you can create and you can assign a phone number to or not if you don't want, depending upon how you build or structure your call queues or your auto attendance. Now you can manage this in a couple of places. You can manage it like I have in that example there where I've built a call queue and an auto attendant using two resource accounts. You can manage it in the Teams Admin Center or you can create accounts using PowerShell. Really straightforward really simple and you can do that really quickly. It's worth understanding that there are some dependencies here. You have to create certain things in a certain order, otherwise it's not going to work. Because as you configure auto attendance or call queues, they may be referencing resource accounts that you might not have created yet, so you can't save the wizard. So understand the order, play around with 
call cues and auto attendance. Build some yourself just to get it in your mind. If you get one of those questions like we all have, where they'll ask you to put the steps in order. Understand this in a bit of detail. So here's some go-dos. Go and learn how to manage resource accounts, create and configure call queues, and create some auto attendance. Have a play with that. And assign numbers to them. Understand how to manage call park policies, manage calling policies, and how to manage caller ID policies and what they do. And how to interpret direct routing health dashboard. The direct routing health dashboard needs direct routing to be there for it to be populated with data, but you may want to go and have a look at some of the data points that you get off of that. Onward to section four. In section four, we're going to be covering managing teams and app policies. This makes up 20 to 25% of the exam overall, and we've got three sections we're going to cover. Manage a team, manage membership in a team, and how to implement policies for Microsoft Teams apps. So in the manage a team section of your exam, they're going to be expecting you to understand how to create a team, how to upgrade an existing resource to a team, how to manage privacy levels for a team, and how to manage org wide teams. So as part of this, there's some functionality called create a team using templates. You can create a template that your users can deploy. For example, if you have a project template that you agree in your organization, or an event template. These are all available within the Teams client. Go and have a play with it if it's available on your, on your tenant. And it enables us to configure specific items, like a name, like some settings that you normally would configure when you create a team, like visibility, any favorited channels, any tabs, any installed apps. It gives us a great starting point to create blank templates if you do this within the wizard by clicking add, or you can duplicate an existing template and just tailor it. Or you can use an existing team within the environment as your baseline. So if you want to build it out within teams, you can then use that to uh, create your template and go from there. It's worth understanding that if you do this for the first time, it can take a little bit of time to replicate through. So be aware of that one as, a, as an IT pro uh, a top tip. You're also going to be expected to know how to manage membership in a team. So how you would manage users in a team, be that you controlling it from the team's admin center, whether you're doing that from configuring dynamic membership, which you can do inside Azure AD, and I'm going to show you in a moment, or managing access reviews for team members. Access reviews are really, really important. They enable you to control how many people are in that team that may have been there, say, 30, 60, 90 days, and they don't need to be there anymore. Really handy for guests. So very quickly at a high level, you can configure direct dynamic membership. Dynamic membership is a simple way to manage groups with a constantly changing membership. So in this example, I've created a group for all Washington state based employees, but you can do it for company wide groups or department based groups. And you build a rule that enables you to target specific attributes in AAD. If you have a team associated with this Microsoft 365 group, AAD will update the membership and add them into the team automatically. Really, really simple, really, really straightforward and can be driven from the Azure Active Directory admin center. It's also worth pointing out that you need to create the team and create the Microsoft 365 group before you can amend any of these dynamic membership rules. So some go do's. Go and understand how to create a team. Go and learn about how you manage teams in the Microsoft admin center and use templates to do that. Understand how you can upgrade an existing resource to a team. So you might have created a SharePoint group that doesn't have a team with it that you can go into the Teams client and upgrade it to be a uh, add teams over the top of it. So you enhance Microsoft 365 groups. Understand how to manage privacy levels for a team and how you would manage org wide teams. Org wide teams are important and they have specific use cases that may not work for larger organizations of 100,000 users that may bust some limits. And finally, we're going to be talking about implementing policies in, for Microsoft Teams apps. So here you'll be able to create and manage app permission policies, create and manage app setup policies, and the exam will expect you to understand what the differences are between the two. So an app permission policy is controlling what apps are available within the app store within Microsoft Teams. We have three different types. We have a Microsoft app, third party apps, and custom apps. And there are different levels associated with it. So if you allow all apps, that enables them all if you allow specific apps but block others, that's your, your allow list. If you have a block list, 
You can block specific ones but allow all others and then you can also block apps. It's worth understanding the different ways you can do that and how, for example, you might want to uh, block custom code as well. The go-dos from this are going to understand the differences between an app permission policy and a setup policy because they're distinctively different. Think of an app permission policy as being available for what app or controlling the behavior of what apps are available and an app setup policy defining what apps you want appearing down the left-hand rail within Microsoft Teams. And with that, I'm now going to hand back to Eunice. Thanks very much. Thanks, Tony, um, and thanks to everyone for joining us today. Uh, a quick reminder, um, be sure to check out our resources for aligned learning experiences. There are some additional digital skilling resources on Microsoft Learn, training events, instructor-led training, and also check out some of our other certifications available to you. Also on this slide deck, you'll find links to resources for this exam. More details about the exam page, resources specific on, to this exam on Microsoft Learn, online training, classroom training, study groups, and practice tests. With that, that brings us to the end of uh, today's show. Thank you very much on behalf of uh, Eunice and myself for sitting with us for the, uh, the last hour. We've covered a lot of content at a very high level. As we've said throughout, there's lots more for you to, to delve in and explore. And as we close out, we just want to wish you all the very best for MS700. And thanks for sitting this session today with us.